Okay, today for the reading, you guys read performance evaluation. So we're gonna talk just a little bit about that for a second. And then when you go to your groups at 2.15, you'll be doing some performance evaluations. So you're gonna take the, I think you're gonna take the job analysis that you did in the last activity and then make some, make a performance evaluation based on that job evaluation. The, whether we do it formally or informally, we are always evaluating our work. And I think that's important because we can't make any improvements if we don't have a basis for, for how we're doing it, doing and how well we're doing or how poorly we're doing. So performance evaluation is, is super important. You know, sometimes we're looking at some raw data. That's always good, of course. And then sometimes we're doing it kind of more by feel. There's, there's occupations where it's, it's really interesting, you know, so teaching is one of those things where, you know, we try to, we try to evaluate performance, but it, it can be tricky to evaluate teaching. So um, sometimes people are a bit hesitant because of that, uh, if, it's, if it's tough to evaluate. You know, there's certainly a number of, of reasons why we want to do this. You know, recruitment of new employees is one. If we don't have a good sense of, of what, what it is we're doing for the job and how do we do it successfully? How are we gonna know who to hire? So we, we, have, to, we have to know how that job performed well in order, in order to do that. Employees and managers aren't necessarily enthusiastic about, uh, enthusiastic about these. I, I mentioned teaching. In, classically in teaching, we have used student evaluations for advancement and things like that. Um, and then also some peer, peer evaluations. The, the problem in teaching is if you look at how easy or hard a class is, that can have some real impact on your evaluations. And so that, that kind of skews it a bit. Um, I think in, in general, students do a pretty good job of evaluating teachers and have a, have a sense of what good teaching is and what poor teaching is. But uh, there's some factors in there that we always um, also want to consider. So it's not a, it's not a perfect science. Evaluations are rarely linked to awards, and maybe they maybe they should be a little bit more. Uh, maybe if we can have a good hard measure of someone's performance, they can say, "Okay, this is this is you, if you can do this, then you can get advanced to the next to the next level and get more pay or or whatever." They're unavoidable, and often many governments require these by law. We also naturally evaluate others others' work and ours. Almost all evaluations, um, we're always almost always doing this, and, and even if it's not systematic or scientific, valid ones require a process and, and guidelines, and that's what we're going to get into in the chapter mentions uh, some ways to do this. So what is meant by a systematic performance evaluations? First of all, we, we talk about what is the exact nature of the job, what you know job descriptions provide specific job duties. The job duty, these job duties are called job dimensions. What is it that we do in the job, okay? Once we understand the job dimension, it's easier to have a yardstick to measure by. And it can be ac accurate knowledge of what the job incumbent does. So if you were, back to teaching, because I started talking about it, um, if you were to find out how to, how to evaluate one's performance, you would want to find out what a, what a professor does on a daily basis. You know, we prepare lessons, we teach those lessons, we meet with students, we read and we research, we counsel on, on careers, we have committee assignments at the university. And so we get all those details and then you start to say, okay, this is what the, this is what the professor does, the different types of things the professor does. How is that work done well? What does it mean to be a good teacher? What does it mean to do good research? And then we break that down into into trying to evaluate more specifically into trying to evaluate performance there are two approaches to performance evaluation the first approach focuses on employee behaviors um, not the person but what the person does most popular is the behavioral anchored rating scales or bars for each job dimension a series of statements is generated that describe the behavior these are called anchor statements for example, example fails consistently to communicate with all units um, needs to respond needed to respond to a situation. These are arrayed on weighted scales.
from excellent to good to poor, et cetera. And some of you may have, have taken uh, in a performance evaluation that used these kinds of statements. Proponents of this like the objectivity and the instructional design of this approach. Weaknesses are it's time consuming to design and too rigid and directive. The second type focuses on results. Instead of behavior of the employee, what are the outcomes? How many new licenses did Jane issue during last quarter? The most popular is management by objectives or MBO. These con uh, systems consist of four basic steps. Setting goals and objectives, working towards the goals or, and objectives, reviewing performance, linking rewards or sanctions to performance. It's important for employees to at least buy into the, sy the system, whatever you, whichever of these two that you're using. Too much emphasis on results may exclude focus on how these results are happening. It could lead to anything goes on anything goes philosophy. Also, results-based systems require special efforts on the part of raters to weigh and filter out extraneous factors. So I, I guess the big advantage of the of the second type here is that it does have a lot of measurements um, that you're looking in from the outside that you can look at and try to try to see, hey, are they are they getting results? And the and the bars approach is more of an introspective answering questions approach that I think is good because people should be introspective and trying to analyze their own work. And maybe in, in that process, they can recognize some things they need to improve on. Um, or if, if they're not self-answering, if someone else is answering these, like I'm the manager and, I, and I'm getting these statements about an employee, I can, I can try to objectively do that as well. Um, so they both have kind of advantages and disadvantages. In the activity today, what you're going to be doing is taking that, that job analysis you did and you're gonna pick um, one, of these, one of these two performance evaluation measures, uh, one of these two approaches to apply to that job. So that's what you're gonna be doing for, for your activity. So that's, that's about all I have for today. We'll see you guys next time.